we now simplify the back boost uh, schema and can see that the core structure is uh, the inductor, the switch, and the diode. The back boost converter is uh, just another way to arrange these uh, three elements. On a steady state, we have uh, two phases. When the switch is closed, we have uh, this circle. The current in the inductor increases, the voltage of it equals uh, V in. When the switch is open, we have uh, this circle. The inductor current drops and uh, its uh, voltage equals to V out. Here we pay attention to the direction of the current. With the polarity of the diode, we have the current flows counterclockwise. So in a steady state, we know the current and voltage waveforms should become periodic, which means the IL at the beginning of the switching cycle should match that at, at the end. I name this point as I mean and the switching point current value as I max. The current ripple delta I L should be I max minus I mean. Since I max can be calculated with the slope of this on physics line multiplying this time dt, the same way we can get the ripple current on the off phase. It equals this inverse slope multiplies this time 1 minus dt. And we remove all the L and T, we got this V out equal V in D by 1 minus D. The average capacitor current is uh, 0, so the average IL is I out. To calculate the C, we know that uh, the C equal delta Q by delta V. Delta Q is the change of the charge. The capacitor provides the output current when the switch is closed and gets charged by the difference between the inductor current and the load current when the switch is open, same as in the boost converter. When the switch is closed, the diode is reverse biased, so only the capacitor supplies the load the diode current is zero. The capacitor current is considered to be the same as the output current, but with opposite polarity. The total charge leaves the capacitor during the on phase is the surface of this shadow. When the switch is open, the diode is forward biased. The diode current is the same as that of the inductor. The current goes into the capacitor is the difference between the inductor current and the output current. The total charge that goes into the capacitor during the off state is this shadow. The first shadow is easy to calculate. It's IO times dt. Now let's imagine that we keep increasing the load resistance R. As R increases the output current, hence the average inductor current will drop, and eventually the lowest point of the current waveform will hit the zero point. Since when the switch is off, not enough current is provided, the current will remain zero until the switch is turned on again. In this way, the current through the inductor becomes discontinuous. Seeing this mode is discontinuous conduction mode, DCM, and the normal mode is continuous conduction mode, CCM, we have a boundary point where CCM becomes DCM. At this point, the triangular inductor current will reach zero at minimum. The maximum value is the ripple current. Okay, now let's do some exercises. 
The first exercise is to calculate the ripple current and ripple voltage based on these conditions. We just need to put the formula for ripple current. Then first get the output voltage and current, then put the formula for the ripple voltage. Actually, if we combine the bulk and booster converter, we can get many other topologies. For example, a bidirectional converter, also called a half bridge converter. As we can see here, when the current is going forward from left to right, switch S1 and the bottom diode D1 work together as a back converter. When the current is going backward from right to left, switch S2 and the top diode D2 work as a boost converter. This can be used for car batteries, for example. It works like a bug when the battery is charged by braking and uh, works like a boost when discharged uh, by the acceleration. There are a few examples of this topology on YouTube and I put the link in the show notes. The second possibility is to put the bug and boost in a series. We close the S1 and the S2 at the same time so that the inductor gets charged. Then open S1 and S2. Let the inductor current continue to flow through the load. This way we don't need to invert the output voltage polarity. So it's called no uh, inverting back boost. This design has more switching loads so it's uh, less efficient. Its advantage is that uh, whatever input voltage range is, we can get a stable output. Because we can choose which mode, back, boost, or back boost to apply. Here, the diode can be replaced by a switch too. There are a few examples of this topology on YouTube, and I put the link in the show notes. Thank mm -hmm. you.